Hey creeps, uh, today I am going to be making one of our core collection Berserker Chokers uh, and I'll be going through step by step how we do it from start to finish uh, so if you want to you can follow along um, I've got everything set up here that we're going to need uh, obviously every, every step I'll write down along with this video so you don't have to watch it through five times in a row and listen to my voice and get too annoyed with me um, so I'll break everything down as best I can uh, step by step after this uh, but yeah let's get going this is everything or a very of some tools that we'll be needing for this but as we go I'll explain uh, different options for different kinds of tools for each step of the process as well so uh, let's get going all right so the first thing we're gonna need to do if you aren't starting with a pre-cut strap is to cut a strap to the right measurements um, so for the berserker choker we use approximately an 18 millimeter strap so if you're starting with a larger piece of leather, of course, first you need to make sure you've got a proper straight edge on one side. And then you're either gonna measure out 18 millimeters all the way across this line. And then mark the 18 millimeters on here. And then you're gonna cut that out with either a knife whatever kind of knife you use. So there's leather cutting knives, there's little scratch blade knives, or you might even have something like this roller cutter, which is fantastic for keeping a really, really straight line. Um, you also might have a hand strap cutter, or you'll be able to get one of those, which you just set the measurement, the 80 millimeters on here, and you take the hand strap, and then that's gonna come, oh, sorry, get in the frame there. I'm gonna come all the way and get that nice strap. Um, I've got something very similar to a hand strap cutter, just mine is attached to the table here, so I can adjust this to 18 millimeters. Make sure it's all nice and straight there. And then I'm gonna just feed through my lovely piece of leather. Slowly, slowly. And the blade on there is just gonna cut a nice, straight, clean line and maintain that width the whole way. But you'll get the same effect with the hand strap cutter. They really are worth getting. You can get them, I think, for like under 10 bucks in the right places. And a, a hand strap cutter will do exactly the same, get a lovely clean finish for you on there. Uh, and of course, if you're gonna use a rotary cutter or a knife, make sure that you use a ruler, preferably a metal or plastic one with a decent thick edge. And that way, whenever you're cutting, you want to keep as close to that edge and follow your line the whole way down and that's going to get you the, the straightest cut. But yeah, that's your first step. You want to make sure you've got your 18 millimeter strap of your nice black leather there and obviously make sure that it is long enough to go around your neck with a little extra. I think this should be plenty. Now that we've got our strap cut to the right width and to the right length, uh, it's time to cut the ends down. So what we use for this is an end punch. So we like to keep it quite simple, just with a nice little 90 degree punch on the end of those. So for us, we just mark those up on the end, make sure it's nice in the middle as best we can. And then we give it a couple sharp wax with the hammer and we get a lovely lovely edge but you don't have to have an end punch to finish those there are all sorts of options that you can do um, one of the things that I like to use is a skiving knife like this but if you have any other kind of leather knife that you're using if you've got a simpler blade like this or even a Stanley blade like a snap blade all of those are fine. And then for your ends, you can either do a nice square end like that, or you can achieve the same kind of look as the punch edge by doing a 45 degree this way and this way, or cutting 
the regular knife this way, this way, or of course you can get creative. I like this little angle here. You can do the other way. You can cut like a end here, end here, end here. Um, there's so many options. There are round punches as well, or of course you can cut by hand a round edge if you draw it on there as well. Um, so yeah, we'll just get our edges finished up there. I'll punch the other one here because that's how we make our berserkers from the core collection. So another couple of wax. And now we've got both lovely ends there. So now we've got the strap cut to the right length, it's time to start working this leather and taking it from this simple strap of straight leather uh, and now to elevate that into something completely different. So at this point I'm going to take an edge beveler, uh, this is a number three that I'm using here. Uh, I would recommend using something a little less aggressive than this, maybe like a 1.5 if you're using the same kind of thickness as this, which is about a 2.5 millimeter thickness. But I've got really good control over this and I can keep it the sharpest. So we're gonna take the beveler and this is something that you will need to practice because getting the angle of the edge right to take just the most extreme of the edge off, getting that angle is really, really tricky. So I recommend before you get it going into your first project that you get some leather scraps and have a little practice just going along and taking those edges off and you'll find depending on the bevel you have and the level, uh, the way that you've cut the piece as well you know, you'll need different angles at different times just to take that extreme pointy edge off because the finish that we're going for is to take it from that really straight edge which especially when being worn is going to cut into your neck and do all sorts of nasty things and also it's not going to last as well uh, as a nice sealed finished edge. So I'm going to go ahead and bevel down just the worst of the corners on this piece of recycled leather and that will start to round off the edges as well. We need to be really careful, they have a tendency to jump out of your hand if you don't have that correct angle. It's usually about a 45 degree angle that I find works best to just take off just enough. But if you're dealing with a bigger beveled edge uh, and a thicker piece of leather, then you are gonna have to take off quite a lot of material from that edge in order to get the rounded finish that you, uh, that you want. So you'll see there's not that much material coming off the strap. I just want to take that really extreme corner off with the bevel up for a piece of leather this thin. So let's get rid of that. I'm not sure if you can see already there, it probably just looks a little fluffier now. But what that's done with the bevel up is just take that extreme 40, uh, 90 degree angle uh, and just start it to round that off. So that's the first stage of working um, with the leather. What we're next going to do is take either an emery board. Oh, that's a bit of a beat up one. Let's take a nicer one. An emery board, uh, which you'll probably recognize as being a nail file. Um, so these are awesome for leather working because they've got two different thicknesses on. So there's a rougher side which will take off more of the leather fiber and file down an edge or a piece, which I often use if I want to straighten something out that hasn't cut perfectly straight. It's a good way to take a lot of material off. And then the other side is a much finer one. So you can use one of these or then just any old piece of sandpaper. Uh, we use a combination of these guys and then also a really fine grain uh, wet and dry. Uh, sandpaper. This is a 1200 grit, so really, really fine. Um, and if you want to get that real glass-like finish on there, you want to be looking at like a 1000 grit, 1100, 1200 grit for the final stage. But for this, because of the leather fibers are quite tight, I'm just going to use the finer side of the emery board. And go over all of those edges, just rounding it off a bit. So what I started with the beveler, I'm now going to continue and round off 
making those edges. I usually start with the ends uh, whenever I'm doing anything with a strap, just because there's a chance when I do so many that I might forget one of the ends at some point of the process. It's much, much uh, easier to forget the ends than a whole length like this. So I'm going to focus on the corners either side, but also go over the top. I'm trying to get all of the bigger pieces of the fibers now off this strap so we can get a really nice smooth finish. So I kind of roll over from one side onto the other and take in that edge away. Feel what you're doing as well. So you want to see the difference at each stage, especially when you're starting out. So get to know what each stage of the process is actually doing to the leather. Because the more that you understand what's actually happening when you use these techniques and these processes and these tools, the more you understand what, what's actually going on, then the more freedom you're going to have creatively later and the quicker that you're going to develop your skills. And that's kind of that's kind of how I see developing my skill with the leather crafts or in anything really. Um, it's not always so much about actually the skill and the craft. For me, developing skills and techniques allows me to then use them as a foundation to get creative with, because it's the creative process and the, the designing and bringing ideas out of my head to life that is the the thing that I'm addicted to and probably always have been. So these skills and these processes, especially the foundation stuff, like these finishing parts, this is just where it starts. This is where you build everything onto. And once you've got the basics down, then you're able to add your own touch and your personality and your style a lot, lot better. So you probably see it's starting to look a lot rounder now as well. We're getting there step by step. Can't rush these things too much because everything takes time and love. So I promise I'm almost done with descending on this part now. So that's kind of my rough sanded edge. So that's taken most of the edge off now. The beveler did the first little job, and now this has gone through and taken that edge much rounder. <sighs> now I'm gonna take the really fine sandpaper, which I really do recommend that you get. You can, you can continue and kind of skip to the next step and burnishing at this point, and still get a really good finish with uh, especially leathers that have a denser fiber count. You can skip this and go straight to waxing and burnishing if you like, but uh, I recommend that you take the extra step and get the fine satin paper out and just take all that last little fibers and get that edge starting to be smooth. Whoops. Okay, so now we've finished up with the sanding down of the edge. And I'm not sure if you'll be able to see, I'll try and get this angle there, but no longer do we have a really sharp angular edge. It's now much, much rounder and it's gonna be a lot more comfortable. It'll still be a little bit fluffy, depending on the kind of leather there, but you can already begin to work, work those down a little bit before we go on to the next step. So next up, we are going to start burnishing this strap. So you're gonna need your little strappy boy there. We're gonna take a block of beeswax. Uh, we get this organically sourced from a nice little place in Portugal, but uh, I'm actually working with someone else at the moment to think about uh, getting another kind of wax just for us, maybe a cute little coffin shape. But you're gonna need your beeswax and take the strap and you're just gonna rub in a really good layer 
across the whole of the edge of this strap. Just work it in bit by bit. And you'll see when it sticks and when it doesn't. Just get that all the way along your strap. So burnishing, if you don't know, uh, is basically taking the edge of a piece of leather and sealing it. So smoothing it down, smoothing down the fibers, and usually involving another substance, in this case, beeswax. But, um, some, some people still burnish leather just with water on the edges, and that gets a smooth enough finish for them, depending on the leather they're using. Um, a lot of edges in history in leather work will have been burnished on the edges using either just water or some natural wax or oils. And as you apply heat and pressure to the wax on the edge of the leather, it breaks down the oils and combines with the individual fibers in that edge, soaks in and protects, the, protects that exposed edge so it becomes resistant to water, for things like this, uh, accessories that are gonna be on the skin, it'll protect from anything that's coming out of the skin, any oils and everything like that. Uh, and obviously it also makes it look bloody gorgeous and nice and shiny, so. We'll be honest, we didn't start burnishing. This is something that came in time with us. Uh, there's no shame in making pieces that aren't burnished, but at the, the level and the quality of the pieces that we want to provide, almost everything now that we do gets this process uh, and gets burnished. So yeah, once the wax is on, you're gonna pull out your hand burnisher. <clears throat> Yours, if you're just starting out, might not look this haggard and worn and black and dyed, um, but this one's, as you can imagine, been through the trenches. So with this now, you're gonna find the spacing that is about the right size for the thickness of your strap. Um, I usually find that actually going one up is, an, is, a good, is a good way to start with and then come down to that size because you'll get the flat edge burnished in and then you can reduce that size down and get more of the fold and get that tied to the bend. But it depends on the finish that you're gonna go for. So we're gonna go ahead, start on my end as I usually do, and you're gonna wanna apply a really decent amount of pressure to the end. It is manual labor to do this, but there's no no other finish that can achieve achieve this than doing it by hand. Uh, even if we're doing a lot of straps all at once, we will use uh, a rotary tool, a Dremel, with a burnishing tip on to start with, but then we always finish every strap by hand. So. You're gonna start rubbing away. You can take a little portion at a time so you keep stability, or if you need to hold it in your hand to keep it straight, then you can do, and you're just gonna start applying pressure back and forth really steadily and nicely, and you'll see that the wax and the fibers start to break down together. You'll see that rounded edge start to come together much, much nicer now, and you'll start to see it seal in. So we're gonna go ahead and burnish all of these edges down nicely now. It's a lot of work, <laughs> needs some real elbow grease, um, but there really is no substitute for doing that by hand burnishing here. And now you'll see a beautiful smooth edge all the way down. All those fibers now folded in and broken down with the oils and the wax into the surface. And that's a lovely, shiny, comfortable and protected edge. So next, we're gonna take your hand burnisher and then flip it over so you've got the uh, pointy side out, kinda. And then we're gonna have this on the back side of the leather. We're just gonna rub any of that remaining wax 
into the leather on the backside there. Any last little parts that might be fluffy on the edges after the burnishing are also going to go down with the wax there. I'm also burnishing down the back of the leather surface like this. It compresses the whole, the whole piece and just makes it a little more long lasting as well. So I'll take that and now we're just going to grab a cloth or a rag. You can see this one's pretty well used. And now give this a really good rubbing down to remove any of the last bits of wax that are on there. So pay particular attention to the edges because there tends to be a little build up when you've applied the wax to the edges. We just want to get that all off. And on the top side here as well, that wax going into the surface, the top surface of the leather there, is gonna do wonders for it and make it really, really happy for a very, very long time and mean that it needs very little treatment. And that's our finished edge. So the strap's st starting to transform into something very, very different now. We've got a beautiful burnished edge on that. The ends are cut nicely. So now we've got our strap ready, we are going to start to mark out our holes for punching. So make sure you've got something underneath the surface to work on. We use cutting boards, but you can use a piece of acrylic, plastic, you can use one of your mum's old kitchen cutting boards, whatever. Just make sure you've got something under the surface here whenever you're doing any hole punching. But we're going to decide that this is the buckle end. So we're gonna get our buckle involved here. And then you're gonna take either an awl that I usually use at this stage, or then any type of pen that you're gonna use to mark with. And mark with either of those where you're gonna be punching holes in a minute. So I usually line up the end hole just a little over, nice in the center there. It doesn't need to go all the way through, just a little mark so I know where it is. Uh, and then I need to make sure that there's gonna be enough room for the buckle to go all around. So however you're gonna do it here, we're just gonna have a single rivet on the buckle loop. So we need to make sure that there's plenty of space when this is in place for it to move there. So I will mark my position with the all there again. Uh, and over time, you'll get very used to how, uh, to the distance that these two rivet holes need to be apart from each other, depending on the stiffness and the thickness of the leather that you're using, and also on the type of buckle and how thick that post is or how much movement is needed in the buckle. But you will get used to it until you do get used to those measurements and have them off by heart then it is really worthwhile to just mock it up put the buckle on have a little fold over and make sure that there's plenty of space for when the buckle goes on so now at the other end we are going to put our adjustment holes so the the holes for adjustment on the choker are going to go on this side uh, usually at, at this point i would measure from the buckle end and make a mark of uh, the circumference of your neck. So the measurement for your neck that it actually needs to be, you should have left a couple of inches for adjustability. Um, so on this piece, let's say that I had marked my neck circumference as being exactly at this spot. So then we're gonna take a ruler or a measuring tape, whatever. I usually use my cutting board because I've got measurements all across here, um, but we'll take Take a ruler, get that on the spot where your neck measurement is, and then I'm gonna use inch spacing, but if you wanna use two centimeters, two and a half centimeters, three, whatever works for you for adjusting, but we are gonna use an inch spacing here just for a couple of adjustment holes at either side. And then we'll put a couple at this side. There. So that's going to be our adjust uh, adjustability holes sorted there. And now the only other holes that we still need to mark are going to be for our spikes. So we're going to use 
eight spikes for a berserker choker in the core collection, but uh, depending on how long the choker is, so depending on your neck circumference, you may end up using more spikes or less spikes, uh, depending on how you feel. Let's see, on this one, I'm usually, uh, by the way, I'm gonna take the last adjustment hole and then the rivet hole for where the buckle's gonna go, and I usually use that um, to get the middle point of where I'm gonna be. So you can either do that by measuring it out, or here I, I can see that this is pretty much the length of my marble slab here. So I will find that and the middle point, which is gonna be here. So I, if I want a stud right in the center there, I'm gonna have that, and then take a spacing, an inch, inch spacing is gonna be perfect for me again today, and I'm gonna mark out. Eight holes, I think. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. <laughs> I can count. So now we've got our holes marked out for punching, and we're gonna punch the holes ready for rivets on this end studs in the middle and then just a hole for the buckle arm to go through when we fasten this on this side so there's plenty of options for how to punch holes and it'll depend on what equipment you've got already um, so the simplest way of doing it is with an awl like this so these guys are nice and pointy on the end and here you can punch through either into the surface and then push through, making sure that you don't stab into your hand. So you'll be able to control the diameter of the hole by how far you push through that. Um, for the rivets, I usually want a two millimeter diameter hole. Um, for anything with a stud, I use a 2.5 millimeter and the holes for adjusting, the size that that needs to be is gonna depend on your buckle arm. So for me, a 2.5, the same as the screw back spacing is gonna be perfect. But that's your first option. So that's a really simple punchy punchy boy, just an awl that stabs through. Uh, another way to go is with a manual punch like this. So this is a 2.5 mil punch. So I can take this, line it up with my marked hole, take my hammer and a couple of swift hits with that and I'm gonna get a perfect hole. Um, another thing that you might want to invest in is like a belt loop punch, wherever I don't want. Here we go. So this is another way that's really good, especially if you're gonna be doing more quantity rather than going one by one. Um, a whole bunch here. These have a little disc, various settings. This one is very nice and has the measurements written out for each one. Most of them do not, so um, you will have to get used to which holes on these match up with whatever it is that you are trying to do. So I'll put a two mil hole on here. Again, just match up with the hole, make sure that I'm in the center. And then with these, a nice little squeeze and you're gonna have a perfect hole through there as well. So whatever method it is that you've got, just go ahead and start punching your holes. Mark, like, line them up with the marks that you made for the hole punch. I usually work with the strap facing me vertically um, so I can get as close to the center with the hole punch as, a, as possible. The same thing if using one of these or whichever way I'm making the hole, um, you can take the time and make sure it's as close to the center as it can possibly be. So I'm just gonna go through. Punch all of these. So in the center here, these are gonna be the holes for the screw back spikes. One by one. I like using these, by the way, now, mostly. A, because I've got my workspace set up so I can work efficiently. I have the marble slab underneath that absorbs the impact. Um, so I do prefer mostly to work with these because I think I can be more specific. 
uh, and more precise in the way that I work with these than I can with something like this, for example. Uh, and this I usually avoid with this kind of leather just because it takes so much work to get it through. Uh, and we do. We make so many holes in so much leather each week, each month, each year that uh, we've had to find some ways to streamline our process. But I do like the old fashioned way with a manual punch and a hammer just because of the control that I get. But take your time with this, um, getting good at getting in the holes, equidistant. And we're back. Okay, so after the rude interruption of my uh, phone battery dying during making the video, uh, <laughs> I spent 20 minutes talking to myself, finished the whole thing, and was super happy only to find that it was gone. But anyhow, I've backtracked. Uh, we're back here. I finished with a lovely brownish strap, all the holes nicely punched, perfectly in the center here, and we are ready to construct this baby. So <clears throat> next up, we're gonna attach the buckle. So for our thinner core collection, chokers we use these single piece um, 20 millimeter buckles uh, so these just kind of fold in the arm goes through that nice little hole that we made earlier that tucks through there and then that's the buckle on the end the rivet goes through those holes keeps it nicely securely together um, the reason I like these ones is because when the strap goes through the buckle this other end keeps it nice and flat against the back of it here uh, if you use other kinds of buckles then you're gonna not have this part and it'll just be open here so you'll need to put a d-ring uh, underneath so it keeps the choker ideally uh, so it keep, keeps the choker flat uh, down but yeah we'll now put this in place with a double cap rivet you can use a single cap rivet as well, which is the same as this. It just doesn't have the nice shiny side on the bottom. It, it has like an open stem. But I think this is an eight millimeter stem and also an eight millimeter diameter cap. And lovely strong heavy duty steel ones that we get. Oh, squeeze that through the holes that we made earlier and you'll see should just have enough of the stem poking out through the leather you don't want it to be to, to be too long if you use a stem that's too long for the layers of leather um, then when you fix the rivet in place the stem might bend and it's not going to hold as strong so yeah we're going to have just enough poking out of the top there um, that we can get the end cap snug <laughs> in place on there and now are ready for setting. So there are a few ways that you can set rivets. Um, most of the time now we use a hand press that we have here uh, because we go through so many thousands it takes a lot of the stress off doing things uh, manually like we used to now. Um, but I guess the most simple and brutal maybe version of affairs is just taking your hammer on a nice solid surface and giving it a pommel, whacking it in. Um, it's not necessarily the prettiest way because you're going to lose that domed, dome surface of the rivet top, uh, which is kind of the point of the double cap at least, but it, at least it's going to be strong. It's not going to go anywhere. Uh, I guess the next level up from that would be to take a manual rivet setter like this, which is just kind of like a punch. Uh, but on this end, it's got a little dome in it, which will be the same size or a little bit bigger than the size of the rivet cap that you're using. So the next, you just take that over, make sure it's nice and straight and then whack, whack in place. So then at least that way, it's gonna maintain the dome shape of the top of the rivet there. Um, but the one on the back will be flat. So I guess that's a personal choice for you. If you wanna maintain the dome on the other end of the rivet as well on the stem cap then you'll have a plate like this which has got different diameters of rivets um, and we'll just sit this nicely there we go into there take the setter 
Again, nice and straight over there. Whenever you're using any of these manual punch tools and setting tools, try and ensure that you keep as perpendicular, like at a 90 degree, uh, 90 degree angle as possible, because then you're gonna get the cleanest finish on whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, with rivets, you're gonna make sure that the cap goes down straight onto the stem, um, rather than bending it like I talked about. So we'll just give that a couple of cracks. Lovely, and that's gonna be beautifully tightly in place. We'll just give that a tug there at least to make sure that it's secure. If it's not, just squeeze it back together and give it another whack and most of the time that'll do it. But that's now the buckle attached and we are looking nice and strong. So the only thing we've got left to do is to bring on the spikes. So for our core collection Berserk Choker, we use a 14 millimeter silver spike and these come with a screw back. So we're just gonna pop all the screw backs through those lovely holes that we made earlier. Um, these are quite a standard size of screw back um, that most of the studs and spikes that you'll buy will come with. I think it's an M3 size thread for any screw nerds that might be watching, <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, uh, these uh, will either come with a Phillips head or a flat head, depending. Uh, we tend to switch ours around depending on length and what kind of thickness of leather we're using and have a bank of different ones, but pretty much any of the studs and spikes that you get are gonna come with the, spike, uh, with the screw backs that fit them at least. So you just turn all your spikes on. You'll get used to this motion. <laughs> if you do a few, uh, few projects with some spikes. And then we'll just take a screwdriver. So a Phillips for this one, or a flathead, if the screw backs are flathead, of course. Get everything nice and tight. Since we don't want these dropping off anytime soon. Um, of course, with anything that you've got that's got screw back spikes and studs on it, it is a good idea every now and again to go through everything you have access to and just tighten them through. Make sure you're not gonna get any surprised lost studs anywhere. Um, I don't know, maybe once a year, twice a year, something like that, and then you'll uh, never lose a stud. So that's it, that's our Berserker Choker done. Now the spikes are in place. The only other thing that we would do at this point is go through over all the metalware and again, a nice little finish up under the leather. Get all the fingerprints off those studs that we've just put in and make sure that everything is glistening and shining. And there you have it. That is how we make our Core Collection Berserker Choker. Um, Please, yeah, please let us know what you thought of the video, if you're planning on following along and making your own, or if this has given you enough information to go ahead and move straight on to doing your own thing by, you know, whatever color or whatever kind of hardware, buckles, studs and everything you want. Um, please let me know how I did. This is my first time, so be gentle, but uh, we're making these videos for you, so I want to make sure that you're getting everything out of them that you want to. So please do let us know what I've done right and, uh, and what I could maybe improve what you think is missing i've tried to include things for different like varying skill levels and interest levels so please let me know if you think i didn't quite target you enough if i didn't go into enough detail for you or if i was actually speaking too complicated and you didn't understand but yeah whatever it is um please do let us know and if you're gonna make something if you're gonna make a berserker or if you're gonna make something of your own please send us picture we would love to see all right i can't get Guys.